Hey everyone, today we are talking about pairs of lines and angles. In order to get into the details of this, we have to review a few things that you're probably familiar with, and that's our parallel lines and skew lines, and what does that mean? Well, parallel lines are two lines that never intersect, and they are on the same plane, so we call that coplanar. And your skew lines are on different planes, and they will never intersect because they're on these different planes, so they are not coplanar. And then we're dealing with what's called parallel planes, and that's two planes out in space that will never intersect. Let's do an example to define some of these things here. Uh, we're going to have this box, and... The first thing we want to do is identify the line or lines that are parallel to line GH and contain the point F. Well, GH is this line here, and we need something that is parallel and contains point F. Point F is over here. So a line that would be parallel to GH would be line EF. So that's what we have to indicate here. And if you recall, the symbol for a line is that double arrow, and we'll put our points E and F in there. The next thing we want to define is the skew line to line GH and contains point F. So again, we're looking at GH and point F and something that is skew or will never intersect because it's not coplanar. So uh, an example of this would be line BF. BF is not parallel to GH, and it doesn't run on the same plane, so it will be a skew line. So we will have BF as our answer in here. Go ahead and box these in. Uh, part C asks us to identify perpendicular lines that uh, to GH and contain point F. So again, GH perpendicular is 90 degrees, if you recall that. So we need something that's 90 degrees to GH and contains point F. Point F is here, so we are actually looking at this back line here, FG. And the last thing in this example is identifying the planes that are parallel to plane GHD and containing the point F. Ooh, I didn't write that in there. Containing point F. And GHD, so start at G, go to H, go to D, which means we are looking at this right-hand plane of this rectangular prism here. And we want something that's parallel to GHD. And if we look parallel, that would be that left-hand side here. And we can identify this as A, B, F, because we want to, again, contain point F. So this would be plane A, B, F. going to look at some postulates here and things that go along with the parallel and perpendicular lines. The parallel postulate says if there is a line and a point not on the line, then there is exactly one line through the point parallel to the given line. Forgot the two in there too. Uh, in not so complicated terms, what this is saying is we have this line, we'll call it line L, and we have some point P, we'll call that point P sitting somewhere above, below, around line L. It says that there is exactly one line that's going to go through this point that's parallel to this line. So if I were to draw in a line, that would be this line, and it's stating that only one line, this line here, is parallel to the given line. The next postulate we're going to look at is the perpendicular postulate. And this says, if there is a line and a point not on the line, then there is exactly one line through the point perpendicular to the given line. 
So again, we have some line that we're given. I'll call it line L again. Some point way off in space, we'll call that point P again. And this says that there's just one particular line that can go through P and go through line L at a 90 degree angle. Now let's look at an example and we have some streets here within a city and little markings on here tell us that this line is parallel to this line. We have 90 degree angles here uh, and some various other lines that go through. The first thing we want to look at is uh, we want to find a pair of parallel lines. So again, these little arrows indicate that this ray GK is parallel to ray HL. So let's go ahead and write ray GK is parallel to ray HL. Part B wants us to name a pair of perpendicular lines. So that 90 degree angle marking is here. So we have ray GK is perpendicular to line JL. So ray GK is perpendicular to the line JL. Part C says, is ray GN perpendicular to JL and explain. So ray GN, so we have G, N is this ray here. Is it perpendicular to the line GL here? And GN is not perpendicular to JL because GK, we've already indicated above here that GK is perpendicular to JL. And by the perpendicular postulate, there is exactly one and only one line through G that is perpendicular through JL. Next, what we are going to work on is identifying pairs of angles. We're going to draw some examples out here. And the first thing we want to talk about are corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are two angles that have corresponding positions. So if I were to draw in two lines here, and then I cut it with a transversal, if I name this angle A, and angle B. These two angles are corresponding because they are both above the line and to the right of the transversal. So they are both in the same position here. The next set of angles we're going to look at are called alternate interior angles. And that is when two angles that lie between the two lines and on opposite sides of the transversal T. So again we have two lines here. Let me draw two lines. Doesn't matter how they look. And then we cut it with a transversal. I'll draw it the other way this time. It says we have two angles that lie between the two lines. So we're in between these two lines. So we're inside here and on opposite sides of the transversal. So we'll call this transversal T. Put a T up here too. And if I label this angle C and this angle D, these two angles are alternate interior angles because they're on the inside of these two lines on opposite sides of the transversal. The next thing we're going to look at are alternate exterior angles. So the previous one said interior, this one says exterior, so I'm sure as you guessed, these are on the outside. So let me draw in two lines here and we'll cut it with a transversal, call that transversal T, and we're working with the exterior, so we're working with two angles that lie on the outside, so I call this E, and then they're on opposite sides of that transversal, we'll call that F. So angles E and F are examples of alternate exterior angles. And the last thing we're going to look at here are consecutive interior angles draw two sets of lines again. Doesn't matter how they look right now and we'll cut it with a transversal. Call that transversal T again. So again two angles that lie between the two lines so inside here and this time they're on the same side of the transversal. So if they're on the same side 
we'll draw two angles on the right. So we're looking at angle G and angle H here. Let's go ahead and look at the last example for this lesson. So we're going to identify all of those types of angles that we just talked about uh, with this picture here. So part A, consecutive interior angles. If we look at the consecutive interior angles, those are on the same side of the transversal inside of your two lines. So we're looking at angle 3 and angle 4, as well as angle 7 and 8. Part B, alternate interior angles. So interior is the key word again here, alternate on opposite sides. So angle 3 and angle 7 are alternate interior angles, as well as angle 4 and angle 8. Part C, alternate exterior angles, alternate opposite side of the transversal. Exterior, we're working on the outside of these two lines. So we are then looking at angle 1 and angle 5, as well as angle 2 and angle 6. Last part of this example is your corresponding angles. So those lie in the same position. Um, so either to the left, right of these lines here and above or below this transversal here. So we have angle 1 and angle 7 are in the same position. We also have angle 2 and angle 4. If I look to the right of this line here, I've got angle 8 is in the same position as angle 6. So I'll write 6 first. So angle 6 and angle 8. And then finally angle 3 and angle 5. And that's it for today's lesson. So that summarizes everything you need to know in this section in regards to pairs of lines and angles. Thanks for listening.